Good morning. Welcome to Terra at Home. And we're in a beautiful little spot in our garden center here. And uh, we are here with Derek from Aquascape. And yes, it is that time of year. We finally get to talk about getting your pond ready for and your water fountains, your mm -hmm. water display in your backyard ready for the season. So we only have a short time to use it. So get Absolutely, her going as early yeah. as possible. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're getting it quite up as early as last year or yeah. some years past. But mm -hmm. um, uh, I think that uh, you can really enjoy it uh, early uh, if you get on it early. So as soon as the okay. ice uh, is gone, yeah. get on out to your ponds. Okay, so that's it, that's it really. I mean, I always yeah. know what, what exactly, when time is it okay to kind of get it going. Right. But just as long as the ice is gone and the snow and the Yeah, if, if you've got a pond with fish, you're going to see that the fish are probably still lurking down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And um, you wouldn't start to feed them until the temperature gets a little bit warmer, usually above 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. You can get yourself a little floating thermometer to check that. Okay. Uh, but generally speaking, if you want to do it by eye, when they start swimming around and coming to the top looking for food, mm -hmm. that's a good time to start feeding them. I always thought you had to take your fish out, so this is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, no, a yeah. lot of people keep them in over the winter as long okay. as your feet's, uh, 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 your pond's a couple feet deep and okay. you kept the hole in the ice. <laughs> so I guess the first thing, fish. yeah. <laughs> The first thing to do, I guess, would be to uh, uh, get the heater out that you've used to mm -hmm. uh, to um, get the pond over winter, mm -hmm. uh, and then um, clear the pond of any debris. So, I always tell people to get their their plants out, mm -hmm. um, fertilize them. Okay. And uh, if you've got a, a larger lily or a lotus or something in a, a two gallon or bigger pot, uh, then you'll put two or three. Um, Tabs, yeah, fertilizer okay. tabs, finger depth right down into the soil. So you're really just injecting them with some goodness and some yeah, nutrients, absolutely. right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And you'll find that the plant will start to absorb it as soon as the soil and the water mm -hmm. starts to uh, warm up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you'd put a new tab every month to six weeks okay. uh, to keep it growing. Yeah, uh, there's also available uh, granular fertilizer that you can mix in with the soil if right. you've got a new plant. And they'll, um, they're time released, mm -hmm. so you just mm -hmm. do it once for the season don't have to go back in the pond that's, at all. That's good. And they're temperature sensitive, our, our particular brand of fertilizer, which is different than the other ones on oh, the market. So okay. as the soil warms up, the plant can use it more. And oh, if it stays colder smart. longer, it, it's not dissolving into the soil okay. and kind of going unused. I mean, let's face it, when you're, you're looking at a, you know, a waterscape like this, really the plant life around it is what gives it a lot of the character, Absolutely, right? So yeah. You, yeah. You, you can't have dead plants. <laughs> no, no, no. You want it to look it alive. Look, yeah. Yes. You want, again, it's just that nice, just the, the vegetation and just Absolutely, Same and the other green. thing is if you have good, healthy plant life in mm -hmm. the pond, mm -hmm. then it's going to com out-compete for nutrients, the algae that will otherwise okay, grow. So if you don't have that. good plants in the pond, then you'll get algae starting to grow. Okay. So the other thing that would help with algae uh, is um, getting your filter uh, up and going. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the plants, but you should probably get your pump back in the pond now. Okay. And, uh, or the skimmer, which is the little box next to your right. pond. If you've set it up your pond with a skimmer, in a biofall system, a biofalls filter. Uh, so get your pump back in there, get the water circulating again, and um, seed the pond with good beneficial bacteria. Uh, okay. And you'll see that uh, in the store. I did bring some with me, mm -hmm. and it's, it comes in a really simple little bottle. Um, depending on how big your pond is, and mm -hmm. it tells you how to calculate that on the back, you'll just put one squirt for every 100 gallons. Okay. Do that uh, as soon as the season starts, and um, do it uh, for the first month of the year, I would do it every week. Okay. And then as the as the year goes on, you know, once or twice a month will be enough. But maintain that that high beneficial bacteria uh, uh, level in the pond, mm -hmm. and you'll find if you do that proactively, uh, then yeah. you'll just enjoy your pond more, and you'll never get the troubles. And that's a concern for people, right? Yeah. Is that they lose that balance, and then right. it gets out of control. Right. And uh, of course, it's moving water is key, right? Again, yes. having that the you know the flow and all that. Because as we know, with mosquitoes, we don't want any standing, no. just completely still water. So Absolutely having that right. all flowing helps. Right, yeah. If there's moving water, you actually get less mosquitoes in the yard because yep. it's constantly wiping out any larvae mm -hmm. that, that they mm -hmm. may uh, lay in there. Either the fish are going to eat the larvae mm -hmm. or they just get wiped out by the moving mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, a water feature is actually a good thing if you yes. want to reduce mosquito yeah. populations. And, and, of course, I mean, as we can tell, it sounds great. It looks mm -hmm. great. It adds such character to your backyard. Um, right. You know, there are people now maybe watching right now saying, okay, what, what, I don't have one. How hard is it? I think years ago, it seemed so intimidating and people worry they're going to flood their whole yard or they're just going to make bad mistakes. <laughs> yeah. But now it really is easy to do yeah. even the smallest little one to the yeah. biggest one. Yeah, we talked a lot about ponds there in the last couple of minutes, but 
I'd say um, ponds are still our number one product and we sell a lot of them, but what's been growing uh, much more quickly in terms of sales is just small bubbling features yeah. in the yard. Yeah. And I know Terra has a huge supply of them, mm -hmm. uh, big mm -hmm. selection that you can choose from in the stores. And they start from really small, just little bubbling features, kind of water that disappears, right. seemingly disappears down seemingly into the garden. Right. But what's hidden underneath is just a little basin yeah. and a small pump and it just keeps recirculating the same water mm -hmm. uh, and you just top it up uh, from time to time if it if we get no rain for a right. few weeks okay. um, and uh, in more elaborate systems we, we actually have some you know three four foot high mm. natural stone columns that you can have the water coming down or several columns with the water coming Love down that. the basins just get bigger the pumps get right. bigger again uh, there's all different sizes and scales available mm -hmm. and price points mm -hmm. uh, at Terra uh, those have been really really popular and those are easy to get up and going in the spring yep. just uh, clean them off just hose them down um, get the pump back in mm -hmm. and uh, fill it with water and plug it in. And so is there and any type of treatment go. you have to put in those at all? We do sell a, a, another little bottle similar to the, the, the bacteria bottle, mm -hmm. one squirt per hundred gallons, probably just one squirt in, in the sure, case of most the fountains yes. because the, the basins are pretty small. Um, and it just says water feature maintenance. Uh, really Easy. simple uh, mm -hmm. uh, and if, again, proactive use if you use it um, before you have a problem, <laughs> you just won't get green. a problem, right? <laughs> uh, now, once it does get green, we do sell other uh, uh, water treatments that right. are a little stronger, uh -huh. uh, kind of like algicides that will kill back the algae. Mm -hmm. um, we have a new one this year called uh, Pond and Debris Clarifier. Okay. Uh, very strong. Um, use it uh, sparingly or follow the directions uh -huh. if you've got uh, expensive fish or just any fish really yeah you gotta uh, take care of those little guys right it's an incredible uh, fast acting water treatment that's new for this year pond and debris clarifier mm -hmm. and it's going to get, get your pond your clean water. and clear that's yeah. the thing you do not want to be looking at someone's water feature in their backyard and it's like kind of murky and no no <laughs> Now, it's, not like, it's like, don't look there. Uh, the lights are going, <laughs> the sun's going down soon, then it'll sound really nice. With, if you come in and talk to the, um, mm -hmm. the staff at, yeah. uh, at Terra, they'll, they'll tell you that if you set up a good mm -hmm. pond system mm -hmm. or pondless waterfall or one of those fountainscapes, mm -hmm. if you've got a good filter and a good pump and lots of water movement, it's plants, good a good mix of plants and fish, uh, then you'll find that you set up a natural ecosystem that, that okay. is a lot easier to take care of. Uh, and, and very little water treatments will be needed. And we should mention as well, of course, uh, if you, uh, you know, you, this is something that you can do on your own, but also uh, representatives from Terra can help you out. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you wanted to, everything from maintenance mm -hmm. to an elaborate installation, and they've done some big ones at Terra, so yeah. really, to you close know, grand for the winter. scales, yeah, yeah, right down to the very small stuff. Which is perfect. Uh, they could have someone come into your yard and do it for you. Very good. Uh, and those people are certified Aquascape contractors. We've trained them. Uh, and they know what they're doing, and they're endorsed by Terra. And uh, that's yeah, what we want to hear. Yeah. So you can actually have one of these and not wreck it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Derek. Good information today. You're welcome. All right, we'll be back with more Terra at home. Told you, Mama's coming this weekend, right? No, you left that part out. Her first visit this weekend? Look around. We're not ready for that. Where are you going? To Terra. Where do you think? This is amazing. You're amazing. Well, we had a little help. Tara, where color lives. Appears Buster's been busy. Yeah, Scott. I was just about to use... You'd be daft to use that, lad. Scott's Easy Seed uses the finest seeds, fertilizer, and natural mulch that absorbs and holds water so you can grow grass anywhere. Looking good, lad. Thanks, Scott. Easy Seed really works. So, how come Haggis is so well-behaved? He's a Scotty. Oh. Get a Scott's Easy Seed. It's guaranteed. Seed your lawn. Seed it. Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We are here with Jamie at Epic Books on Lock Street in Hamilton. And this is your little shop. This is my shop. Yeah, oh, cool. How long have you guys been here now? Uh, it'll be four years in September. That's pretty awesome. So, how yeah. how come a bookstore? Why? How did that come to be? You know, it just really grew out of a, a love of books. Mm -hmm. I was uh, working in Toronto and commuting back and forth, and oh. not really wanting to live in Toronto. And I thought it would be great to be able to do something in Hamilton, mm -hmm. and uh, a bookstore. That was because commuting cuts into book reading time. 
doesn't it? <laughs> well, you, you can read books on the GO train. So. Yes, on the GO so, train, yes, so you there can. Was that, but. but some people try to read books while they drive, so we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> so we're here. At, tell me a little bit about your shop and, and um, who you please. Who do you try to please in the community? Well, we're, uh, we're on Lock Street, and Lock Street's a really, really big family community, so mm -hmm. there's quite a few schools in the neighborhood, so we try to... Um, please everybody, mm -hmm. I guess. We mm -hmm. consider ourselves, as opposed to a trade bookstore, more of a family bookstore. Okay. So we try to have things for children and teenagers and adults and That's everyone. Great. And yeah. just that kind of, that, that it's, a, it's a tiny little shop, but you've got a lot of, <laughs> a lot of little bit of everything, right? Thanks, yeah. Um, we're only about 700 square feet, maybe, mm -hmm. so we try to have a, a cross-section of a lot of different things. And right. then if we don't have it, we're always happy to special order it and mm -hmm. bring it in and well, I think it's amazing because I've had you know some opportunity to kind of look around and I've already seen a lot of books that I like that interest me and that's a good sign, right? When you are going through, it's kind of looking at like looking at a menu in a restaurant where you you can see a lot of great things that you want and that's that's a good sign of a well picked out, you know, it's well chosen. Um, so so kudos for you. Now we have a table here of some of the books that you have uh, decided are sort of kind of cool and new and up and coming and yeah, happening for fun, spring. You know, a little bit of a mix of mm -hmm. um, of some classic children's books that have been done in different ways. Mm -hmm. So each peach they finally put into cloth, which is wonderful for mm -hmm. for very very young children. Yes. And um, you know, we have some bath books and some of the more interactive stuff for spring. But that's the thing we're noticing a lot of, a lot of kids books in here, and as you say, with families and schools mm -hmm. nearby. This is a great and I mean. As, as a, a parent, I love buying books for my little guy, <laughs> so I think it's the best thing you can do. And, and right from the get-go, reading is key. Yep. And then they'll continue to and make it an adventure to come here together. Oh, it's so and much choose fun. choose out books yeah. together, right? We have some chairs, so people like to sit and read books together, mm -hmm. or sometimes the kids just kind of plop themselves down on the floor, the floor and yeah. <laughs> flip through whatever they feel like. And I love that. We're just trying to do like a nice, warm, welcoming space for, mm -hmm. for families to feel comfortable mm -hmm. to come that's, and that's spend a, some time. It's a great idea. Oh, and this, and also we should talk about um, really trying to back local artists and local, right. local authors. Yeah, so we have a wonderful local author section where we, we mm -hmm. take books from all kinds of authors in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just an example. This is Imagine. It's done by a local author, and um, we will have her coming in to do story time with the children. Oh, I love um, that. I think it's going to be, we've tentatively set April 20th at 10.30. Mm -hmm. So she's going to come with her writing partner. They, they're both child and youth work majors, mm -hmm. and they're going to do story time and some songs mm -hmm. and just spend some time with kids. And, mm -hmm. But that's yeah. nice though, right? And I, and I think that's what's great about Lock Street as well, is everybody's trying to be as local as possible and trying to really just push local artists and authors and, and, um, and it really does make a difference, right? Because people right. can identify. Of course, yeah. And I think that's a, that's a really nice thing, especially, again, as you say, when it becomes family oriented. Yeah, right. Okay, so let's shift a little bit over. Obviously, this is nice and oh, uh, yes. uh, dear to our hearts at uh, Tara to talk about outdoors <laughs> and uh, <laughs> making your outdoors look great. Yeah, of course. Well, springtime's coming, so we have a selection of, um, you know, gardening for flowers, gardening for vegetables, all kinds of stuff. So mm -hmm. some people, you know, it, it's really, really big right now to, to get rid of your lawn. Like people just don't <laughs> want to see grass. I don't know if they don't want to cut grass or what. Mm -hmm. So we have all kinds of books about yeah. So planting. Put in lots yeah. of perennials and make it yeah, look awesome. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah. I can't claim to be an expert there. I know absolutely right. nothing. That's why people go to Tara. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there you go. Okay, and uh, so let's talk about uh, maybe just a really good book to sit down and... Oh, well, this one was right. one of my favorites last mm -hmm. year, and it's just come into paperback, so I'm really excited about that. And, of course, we have some some fiction titles. This mm -hmm. was our Giller winner last year. So oh, okay. So that's and that's a great exciting. thing. So, so you, and again, and your staff as well, really trying to keep up on what's going on and I think we were talking about the difference between being in some of the big box stores mm -hmm. uh, walking in and kind of being lost in you know and not yeah. really knowing what to do you guys can really you know what's here you know yeah. every book in the store and you can really help so, and, and help just again um, if they're looking for a book you can get it for them if it's not here of course yeah no we can always bring stuff in we love making recommendations and mm -hmm. helping people shop for gifts mm -hmm. personally I have a pretty good idea because I do all the ordering for the store <laughs> yeah. so I pick all the books out so I, I usually have fun with that oh it's so much fun like it, how, it's great <laughs> so I, I mean obviously you, you you know in general what your clientele is looking for on a basis you probably get a, a bit of a pattern what you yeah. sort of uh, started to see See, people are looking for and then of course you have to kind of go outside of the yeah, box too, right? it gets it gets easier every time I do it because mm -hmm. you, you start to learn your community a little bit more and know what people are looking for and right certain things you know work certain things you don't know right you know like you just know that it's just and it's not amazing how some things you think would and, and it's the other way around right <laughs> I have a lot of fun with it sometimes yeah. I bring stuff in and I'm, I'm flummoxed I'm mm -hmm. like I don't understand why nobody wants to read this but yeah. 
go figure it. Just, right? It just happens that way it sometimes. Happens. Yeah. Now, um, what would you say is uh, what are sort of the popular genres right now that people are looking for? I mean, I think in general a lot of people still love their cookbooks. They do, yeah, and we have a huge cookbook selection. I just mm -hmm. set a couple down there. We have everything from going vegan to eating in food trucks, so mm -hmm. we've got all kinds of stuff. Right. Um, the children's stuff is is always going to be, I think, our biggest, and we're standing right in front of our wonderful young adult section. Okay. So okay. the young adult stuff is really popular, not just for teenagers. A lot of people are with mm -hmm. the advent of Hunger Games and all, that. all of that are kind of into it now mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, so. and I can see that because again, when we were looking, you know, talking about the Hobbit and, and well, back in the days when all these this ton yeah. of movies were coming out, really, again, it was all ages are reading these books. It doesn't course, have to be yeah. about, you know, I know we all read The Hobbit in high school, but it's, <laughs> people are re revisiting. Of course, right? yeah, no, it's about escapism, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just want to relax with a good book and mm -hmm. just yeah. lose yourself for yeah. a bit. No, I can, I yeah. can agree. So what, uh, what else do we have here? Oh, well, we have some good kids stuff. Um, <laughs> Star Wars is back. Okay, so yes, I'm noticing this is <laughs> a... <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a new thing, and this is a series of books that's based around Origami Yoda. So it's an origami Star Wars series, which is a little are bit odd and, and different, but <laughs> the young boys are just loving it. No way. So for the summer, they've brought out um, an activity book. So it's not a story, but it's got all kinds of doodle and draw and all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's really good for if you're traveling over the summer and yeah. you need to keep a little one busy, doodle and draw. That way to go. It's hilarious. Yeah. That's so Star really Wars is back. Okay. It's, it's a thing. Yes. Some little boy showed me his sparkling Jedi shoes this morning. So <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's it's a little I bit crazy. Like, okay. I was I was kinda shocked by it, but it's I know. it's here. It's so true. It's a thing. And of course in the vein of Diary of a Wimpy Kid, we have a new series that's similar to that. Okay. And this one is one of my faves. It is a beautiful, Ooh. beautiful new edition of Alice in Wonderland. Oh, stuff over, but which is my Oh, one of my all-time oh, faves. Oh, that is so cool. The illustrations are just so beautiful. And you can't go wrong great. with a, a classic kids' book redone, right? It's been reinvented, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so that is so cool. Very, I like to try nice. and have some of the stuff that's a little bit different and that mm -hmm. you normally wouldn't find on the shelves everywhere, you. right? That's what you should do. Yeah. So people can come in, talk to you, find a great book for them, especially with the summer coming up. Um, again, people are going to be looking for that great read to take to the cottage or just hang out in the backyard, right? So of course, yeah. So perfectly ask lots of questions and uh, talk to you about some of the family gatherings you're going to have as well. Perfect. Thanks, Jamie. Well, All thanks. Right. Thanks, thanks so much for uh, coming. No problem. Down on the Lock Street in Hamilton. We'll have more at Terra at Home in a bit. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the Medallion Plant Tag. Medallion Plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Good morning, welcome back to Tara at Home. I'm here with Chef Rachel in our kitchen, and yes. what are we making today? Today we're doing uh, pork loin chops. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna saute them up and make a, a nice port, orange port sauce Ooh. to go with them with some mushrooms sauteed nice. in there. Nice, okay, yeah. sounds great. Okay, so let's start with the pork because what I like to do is just get these, um, you know, searing on both sides mm -hmm. in the pan, and then we're gonna cook the mushrooms in the same pan that we cooked Okay. The pork and just That'll keep all those flavors there. Mm -hmm. So we'll just um, we'll season these with salt and pepper. Um, I know typically you like to sear your meat and then put it in the oven too, right? Yeah, that's, that's usually just, what I do. That's a good idea though. Yeah. So you're not just frying meat up just the whole time mm -hmm. to cook it. Okay. Yeah, if I if you get that nice color on the outside, right? Um, but not too much, you know. So you mm -hmm. get that nice color and then you can finish it off in the oven mm -hmm. instead of keeping it. You know, on the heat and That's flipping nice it back, trying to not too, to, right? yeah. yeah, trying not to get it too, too dark. And actually, pork, pork like this is very, um, very light and uh, low in fat too. 
when you when you when it's been trimmed nicely and it's really lean. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a really great cut of meat to choose. A lot of people kind of forget about pork sometimes. Supporting the pork farmers of Ontario. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do often use a whole uh, a whole loin. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, I do the same thing, sear it, put it in the oven, yeah. and in that case it's easy, it's really easy to cook a whole loin like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, these just look so nice, um, mm -hmm. perfect size for a portion, and so... It is a nice size. Mm -hmm, we're going to do this, and you know, w with the nice weather coming up, you can start to barbecue too, which, yes. is, also, which is also good. So yeah, th these are starting to cook up pretty fast, so like I said, just a couple minutes on each side. To get that color and then we'll transfer them awesome. uh, to the baking sheet okay in the meantime i'm just going to tell you a little bit about the mushroom mixture yes i'm noticing you have some uh variations some i don't recognize the name of right <laughs> okay so i've started to chop some up uh so of course your basic cremini mushrooms which is just like a small portobello mushroom mm -hmm. uh, looks like a white button mushroom that kind of a shape yep. so i always like to add those in they have some nice flavor and uh and uh but not, to, not over the top flavor. Some of these other mushrooms bring out a lot of different kind of earthy, really earthy yeah. flavors. Like intense. Let me just have a look on these. Okay, okay that's looking good. So we'll flip these over. Um, okay, so I also have... So you have this guy. Yes. So these are called morel mushrooms. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, morel, that's the name. Morel. Uh, very earthy. Very right. earthy. And they're nice when they're fresh, but I don't normally find them fresh around here. Yeah, no, it's hard to find them. Mm -hmm. So if you do, let stores. me know where you get them. But um, <laughs> uh, but anyways, they come dried most of the time. So you just soak them, right? Yep, you just want to rehydrate them for about 20 minutes or so. In You can do that in some wine or mm -hmm. stock or mm -hmm. water, whatever, That's whatever you That's great. It's prefer. amazing that you can do that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So they're nice and hard here, but after you after you soak them, of course, they're they're nice and soft, and I like these. They do have a really earthy flavor, uh, but a cool texture too, mm -hmm. and it's something yeah. different. Yeah, little sponges. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just kind of an interesting fact about these: they do contain a little bit of toxins in them. So those toxins. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> we can get rid of those by cooking them. No way. Okay. Yeah. I so, did not know that. Mm -hmm, very so you interesting. can't eat them raw. So you should not eat these raw. Yeah, which is a good tip to know because write that I'm, one down, people. <laughs> yeah, when I'm cooking with mushrooms, I always kind of pop yeah. one in my mouth. So just just so you know. Oh, interesting. Well, um, we, I mean, we obviously know there are poisonous mushrooms out there, but I wouldn't have associated the one of the ones that we actually eat mm -hmm. as being somewhat toxic. Yeah. So. Okay, I'm that's sure, a good tip. You know, if yeah, you, if you, you really want to bit. try it. Yeah, you could. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyways, we want to keep that in mind. Okay. And we're not going to use all of these. We're just going to no. use a, a couple, just to kind of bring out that flavor. But okay. Okay. These are looking really good now. So I'm going to turn them off, and then we can just transfer them, like I said, yeah, to the baking good. sheet, 350 degrees in the oven, and they shouldn't take too long to finish off. Okay. Okay. So back to the mushrooms. What I want to do with the mushrooms that I'm using. Um, is kind of keep their shape because these mushrooms are are different looking mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and the morels I don't really want to chop them up fine and, and ruin their nice shape so I've just kind of cut these ones in half oh, and just and and okay. slice them you know not to I yeah, don't want to I want to kind of keep their nice flavor you know sometimes you get those uh, the oyster mushrooms like mm -hmm. they have such nice they do oyster mushrooms character. look really yeah. cool yeah so I just I don't okay. chop them up too much just a little bit, and even these, like some of some of the small ones, I'll just keep full. And then if you get a big one, maybe just cut it in half, just to kind of keep that. So they'll give yeah. it a lot of um, okay. kind of texture and character. And it's to really the dish. nice to mix mushrooms, as you say, with the various flavors. It's it just and it and it looks cool as you when you're keeping them in this uh, form. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah, very different. So we'll cut up a couple of these, and then, like I said, we're going to use the same. The same pan okay. that, that this was in to, that the pork was in to do the mushrooms. So we'll just take these out. Okay, and there's still a little bit of uh, fat in there. So put this back on. Yes, yeah, so that's going to give the pan a nice uh, flavor. Mm -hmm. And then we'll deglaze it later with the pork. So I start off um, with some shallots. Okay. And we'll just cook those for a minute, and then we'll put the um, the mushrooms in there. You can add a little bit of garlic at this time if you like. That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. 
And then, yes, for our sauce, we've got some port wine, a okay. little bit of stock. Okay. And so that's going to make up the base of our sauce. We're going to finish okay. it off with some uh, butter to kind of thicken it up a bit. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and some little chunks of blood orange. A little blood and orange. We can How do, beautiful is that? Mm -hmm, so pretty. Yeah. We can do a little zest too. Okay. Yeah, that'll and be good. That'll help. The zest always really gives you that nice, intense, uh, but mild still. Just helps carry yeah. the orange flavor through, right? Mm -hmm. So very good. Yeah. Okay, I so, like this combination. This is cool. Saute these up. And mushrooms don't normally take too long. No. To cook, but we'll just uh, very good. Keep those going there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can so you when that? you're making your sauce, mm -hmm. once you take once you take um, the mushrooms out, we'll kind of put those aside, and like I said, deglaze with the wine, which just means, um, you know, it kind of gets up all the bits that are at the bottom of the pan. Okay. Uh, basically, all we really need to do is simmer it, and okay. that should naturally thicken it. All right. Very okay. good. So what we'll do is take a quick break. We'll come back and uh, we'll finish this up. I told you, Mama's coming this weekend, right? No, you left that part out. Her first visit this weekend? Look around, we're not ready for that. Where are you going? To Tara, where do you think? This is amazing, you're amazing. Well, we had a little help. Tara, where color lives. Welcome back to Tara at Home, and we are finishing up our pork chops. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess they're not chops technically because they don't have a bone in, right? So right. what do we call them? Pork loin. Pork loin. Pork loin. Yeah. All right. Um, so you have. Let's talk about what you have in the pan right now. Okay. So what I did after I took uh, the mushrooms out of the pan, I deglazed with the port. Right. Okay. And then you boil that for about a minute or two. Then you add in some stock mm -hmm. and let that boil uh, until it starts to reduce. And then, uh, you know, when it starts to reduce and you're getting kind of thick uh, consistency, then you want to just whisk in a couple tablespoons of butter. Wow. And then basically your sauce is done. So um, we can put uh, a piece of pork on each plate and then top it with the sauce. So at this point, we can actually mix in uh, the mushrooms okay. and a little bit of the orange too. Okay. If we want, into the sauce here. Now, how long did you leave the um, the pork in the oven? Oh, they only take about 10 minutes yeah, or so. Yeah, pretty quick, right? Uh, yeah. Because once you seared, they were almost cooked, right? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't searing either side or side. Yeah, and okay. these are actually very thin, too. Mm -hmm. So just keep an eye on them, but they actually don't take very long at all. Okay. Okay, and so we can put a little bit of this in there, too. There right. we go. So nice mm. combination of flavors. All right, while you're plating this, just to remind uh, everyone, of course, you can uh, find this recipe online on our website, terragreenhouses.com, along with all of Chef Rachel's uh, recipes along the way. And uh, it's always just fun trying something new, mm -hmm. and you always make it look so easy and straightforward. So yeah, I just like, I can do this. I want to try this. It is. This is great. There this will be beautiful, rich flavors again with that port. That's going to really give it a really nice flavor. Mm -hmm. And we can finish it off with a little oh, bit yes. of zest, like, zest. We, like we talked about. Just a little and it bit. looks pretty too. It does. Adds a little bit of color in there. And this would be nice served with some fresh greens. Yeah, absolutely. Always. Yeah. Very good. There oh, we go. You've outdone yourself, Chef Rachel. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's it for now. Have yourself a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday.